the heck just happened to the stock of Dexcom? Here's a company that you know we've liked for a long time. Dexcom makes continuous glucose monitoring devices that serve as an almost hassle-free way for diabetics to monitor their illness. It's much easier to stick, stick on one of Dexcom's devices, remotely monitor it, than it is to prick your finger a dozen times a day doing traditional blood sugar tests. Now, last year, things got very rough for Dexcom stock as investors started to worry about increased competition, particularly from the giant that is Medtronic. But then in mid-January, we seemed to set those concerns aside when Dexcom received a positive reimbursement ruling from the federal agency that controls Medicare and Medicaid spending. This decision came a year before anyone expected it, and it meant that the company had the only product in the class that the government would pay for. So the stock shot up from 67 to 84 in a single session on the news. Since then, though, Dexcom stock has traded right back down to 68 as of today. The reason? Well, the company reported earlier this month it failed to live up to those high expectations that the announcement created. Dexcom missed Wall Street's revenue estimates and indicated in the conference call they were experiencing delays and difficulties in processing Medicare reimbursement claims. Still, the company reiterated its full-year guidance, and while the Medicare-related delays are a problem, Management sounded quite confident the long-term story was still very much intact. At this point, the stock has repealed nearly all of its gains from the Medicare ruling. You know what? we got to figure out whether it's overcorrected to the downside. So let's check in with Kevin Sayers, the president and CEO of Dexcom, find out more about his company's doing and where it is headed. Mr. Sayers, welcome back to Mad Money. Good to see you, sir. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. Thank you for coming back on. Clarify some things. Thank Have you. Okay, uh, on, on your conference call, you mentioned at one point, you said there wasn't anything that was a part of this process that made it really had been like any other. So why don't you walk us through, because, boy, it was exciting when you got that, that go-ahead. Well, you remember when I was here last time, yeah. uh, I, and I told you we were expecting it 18 months later, and then it came a couple days after. CMS has been very cooperative okay. in trying to get this through. The organization. The organization has, and, and people understand the need for these senior patients to have this. As we said on our call, we have thousands of patients lined up, approaching 15,000 right. Medicare patients in our pipeline now who want this product. But all the boxes have to be checked and all the administrative codes have to be put into the system. And, and, and we just haven't done all those steps yet. What is it, we or they have it? Well, it, it's CMS, but, but we're talking with them and, and, and we'll get it all done. Now, the, the, traditionally, what would have happened? How, what would have been the process that would have made it so that these 15,000 people aren't kind of left hanging? Well, traditionally, there's a process where you have a national or local coverage decision. And once those decisions are made, then the guidelines are in the system and people who bill for the Medicare services or provide the Medicare Medicare products can go in and bill and everything works out seamlessly. In our case, what happened is we got something called a joint directive where the criteria were outlined, but the coverage decisions are not yet in the system yet. And so that created a sense of expectations right. and want everybody to go. And, and, and again, we've had continual discussions with them. It's all going to be worked out. It just takes a few, it, it's just taking time. Now, well, is it possible that during this interim that a Medtronic gets an advantage because you're not uh, able to fulfill what people We want. always worry about that, but today we have the only continuous glucose monitor that has a therapeutic claim that you can dose insulin with, and that therapeutic claim is required to do this. Uh, and, and so right now we're still in a very good position. All right, how about this artificial pancreas that always seems to get people excited from Medtronic? What is it? Could that be a game changer for, that would hurt Dexcom? <laughs> We have been involved in artificial pancreas programs for a very, very long time. In fact, mm -hmm. most of the research that's done on those has been done with our sensor as being the glucose value provider for those systems. We think that type of technology will provide benefit to patients. But as we look at diabetes therapy, the most important thing we see is continuous glucose monitoring and glucose measurement. So we focus on what we do best and continue to provide that. And study after study, show that when a patient is provided continuous glucose monitoring, mm -hmm. the impact of that is bigger than anything else you can give them. Well, that's what so they we'll, want. we'll stick right. to that. That's what they want. Now, in the interim, we'll also some new things. Uh, Apple Watch, you figured out how to make that work? Oh, Apple Watch works very well, and, and, and our Apple partnership, you know, they, they were very instrumental in helping us get to the phone and, and show the data on the Apple Watch. And, Patients very much enjoy that app and using that. Okay, and just to refresh people where you are with Verily, which is part of the, uh, the larger rubric that is Alphabet. Our Verily uh, relationship is a product development relationship, mm -hmm. and we've licensed a lot of technology and, and actually a lot of brain power, some incredibly smart people, 
to miniaturize our products and to make them more efficient, lower cost, enable them to communicate with, with, with numerous things. Well, they next generation, I mean the 6? So the Gen 6 will be a Dexcom product, but right. shortly after that, our first Verily product will come. And that will be a no calibration, 14-day sensor that, that will communicate. No calibration, 14-day sensor. 14 day Very sensor. big breakthrough. Very big breakthrough. And, and we, we haven't started studies on that, but we will. Mm -hmm. And then the, the product after that one is where we take really all this miniaturization, put it in a package about the size of a penny. Wow. And if you can put something that's the size of a penny on your body and wear it and measure glucose continuously, as we look at the future and diabetes management and pre-diabetes mm -hmm. management and type 2 diabetes, this is a solution we believe that'll work for everybody. And that's why we were so excited about the relationship and progress has been great. All right, well, that's good. I'm glad you came on and clarified because it did seem kind of strange, but the conference call explained it, but you just explained it just as well as you did on the conference call. And I thank you for our viewers. That's Kevin Sayer, president and CEO of Dexcom. Stick with Craig. Thank you, Jim. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.